wonderful service in the house of God and there was a one you know we had our pastor uh, had a Bible lesson you know and it's wonderful this Bible lesson is telling us um, how good God is and how you know it, it was about Matthew chapter 17 when um, I'm sorry I gotta mute you because there's a bag thing in the background when the disciple Jesus took went upon the Mount of Transfiguration Upon the Mount of Transfiguration, he took his disciples, Peter, James, and John. Hallelujah. And the Bible says he was transfigured before them. Amen. What oh, wonderful it is. The Bible says his face was as shine as the sun, and his garment was white. And there appeared with him Moses and Elias, Elijah. And he had a, they had a wonderful vision upon the Mount. And the lesson was that we need to climb up. When we need to get to God, we need to climb up. And today we just want to climb a, a step higher and get closer to heaven, closer to God. All participants and we just want to worship Him in the beauty of holiness because He is God. Amen. And He's worthy of our praises. He's worthy of the Hallelujah. honor. He's worthy of everything that we, you know, we can give unto Him. The, the psalmist says, Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory, praise in His holy name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And I always say that when we come into the house of the Lord and we start to praise God, and then we feel the visitation. I mean, thank God um, for Sister Clark who was out today. And you know, I know she's always there in the house of God. We thank God for you, my sister, that you're feeling better. And you was out in the house of the Lord. But you know, it's awesome when we worship together. And when we feel the presence of the Lord. There's nothing to compare to the presence of the Lord. In the house of the Lord. Amen. So my our soul was blessed today. As we was in the house of the Lord. Rejoicing in the God of our salvation. Hallelujah. And we just want to thank Him. And we want to praise Him. Um, um, we want to pray for those that are bereaved at the moment. We want to pray for those that are going through some kind of um, uh, problems, emotional and distress. And we want to, I'm going to ask Sister Clark, I'm going to ask you to pray for those that are sick in the hospital. I'm going to ask you to pray for those that are bereaved. And I'm asking you to pray for those who are not well and is struggling for one reason or another. So before we go any further, Sister Clark, just pray for those who are suffering, those who are bereaved, those who are troubled, and ask God to touch them in the name of Jesus. Can I ask you to pray, Sister Clark? Mm -hmm. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Most righteous and eternal Father, I thank you for this day that you have given unto us. I thank you that I was able to go in your house. Join with the other saints to worship you, to adore you, to praise you, to lift up your name and I. I thank you for your servant that uh, liberate on your words to us today about your transfiguration. Father, we thank you for him. And may you continue to bless him and strengthen him physical and spiritual. And give him new vision for your people. And we thank you for all those who are able to attend today. We thank you because your Holy Spirit was right there with us, leading and directing us because he's the head of the church. And we thank you, Father. And here, Lord, the requests have been asked to make for those who are bereaved right now. Lord Jesus, in heaven, you know all about the condition. You know all about the situation. And you know that we are only weak and frail. And I pray, my God, that you will put your hands around those who are bereaved, those who are not feeling well, those who have got um, some sort of condition, 
financial problem, those that have lost their jobs, those that are living, oh God, and not knowing where the next morsel of food is coming from for them. Lord, you are the provider, a thousand cattle on the hill belongs to you. And so I pray that you will have mercy and compassion. Many are calling out to you right now, near or far, many are calling out unto you. And so this day I pray, my Father in heaven, through the, your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, that you will hear and answer their plea. Mm -hmm. Oh God, I know that you said that no one come to you, you will forsake them. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, you look after the birds in the air. Mm -hmm. Oh God, the beasts in the field, they do not provide for them. You provide for them. The lily of the fields, how beautiful they be. Lord, much more about your children. Oh, dear Father, I pray this day, whatever their situation may be, intervene and help them, my God. Because you are our source. We haven't got no one else to call upon. Oh, dear Father, you are in heaven. We are on earth. But you tell us that we must call out to you. As the songwriter said, what a privilege to take everything to you in prayer why because you're awake you're listening thank you jesus you're hearing amen so we know that heaven is always open to our cries and all those that are in the hospital this moment even those that are dying i pray that the holy spirit will comfort them and lead them home to be with you our heavenly father we thank you for this day and we bless your holy name the day that you have given unto us to rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah. And I'm thanking you, Father, that you are the God of all flesh. Thanking you that you do listen, you care, and you understand. And that's the whole reason why you came to earth to be like man. So you would know how they feel. You will know what's going on in their body. You will know what is going on naturally as well, Father. So provide for those who are in need this moment. Hear my plea this moment, Lord, as I stand in the gap for all those who are not well. For those that are in the hospital, remember, oh God, the doctors and the nurses continue to give them wisdom, knowledge and understanding and a heart of compassion to help your children and your people wherever they are. Father, we just want to thank you, and I pray that you will bless this telecom service. Oh, God, help each and every person that listened to this service tonight, Lord, that something will touch their hearts. Bless the speaker, bless the moderator and the speaker. I pray that you will be with him, Lord, and pray that as he would expound your word to us, your children, and whoever is listening, Father that he will do it with clarity and understanding of the Holy Spirit towards your people. Father, we are just looking to you. Oh God, our hope is in Jesus. Hallelujah. Our inheritance is in Jesus. And because of that, you are assure us that we can call it to you anytime. And so, blessed Savior, I humbly call on you this moment. Please hear and answer my prayer and the off of all those who are in need of your help right now yeah. bless us lord and when i fail of asking of you this morning father fail not to grant it as i say thanks to you through your son jesus christ and the holy spirit amen 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 praise amen, the lord. amen 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 praise the lord my sister thank you for amen. your prayer prayer god bless you amen. You know, in these days, we have so much to pray for. We have so much to ask God for. We are in a troubled times. And troubled times cause, serious times cause for serious measures. And it's time for us to reach out and touch the Lord. We who know the Lord, we need to draw nearer to Him. We need to draw closer to Him. We need to be more committed 
to our faith and to our salvation. Yes, Lord. You know, um, the songwriter says, Just a closer walk with you. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Mm. And it should be the plea of every one of us to have a closer walk with the Lord Jesus. Yes. In these troubled times, we need the Lord. The songwriter says, If ever I need Amen. the Lord, surely I need Him now. Surely we need Him now. The world is in, the, in a confused yeah. state. You know, there's, nobody knows what is going on. The whole world is troubled on every side. You know, and the only comfort we have is in Jesus. And as we heard today, there is one good news. Of all the news that we are here, and every day we pick up the phone, we pick up the newspaper, we look at the television, there's no good news. When was it the last time we heard any good news from the media? No good news. But there is a good news. Jesus died for us. And he died to give us salvation. He died to save us. That's good news as you can ever get. That is the best news. And once we accept and have this news, we don't need any other news. That's all we need. He died for us. We were going headlong down to hell. And Jesus looked down and said, No, I can't allow this. I am going down to save Adam's fallen race. And he left his rainbow circle throne and came down to earth to be embodied like a man, to live and to breathe like a man, to be born of the Virgin Mary in a lowly place so he can redeem us. So his blood was shed to save us. That is good news. And that is the good news of the kingdom that we have to take with us. Because Jesus died for us to save us. And we are, we, we are blessed because of his blood. We are blessed because he was righteous. He was holy. And there was no sin found in him. And that's why he was, his blood was able to, to save us and give us salvation. And so we are rejoicing in this God of our salvation, the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So we want to thank the Lord always and have us a, 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 a lips filled with praise and thanksgiving and a heart of thanksgiving. Songwriter says, I will praise thee, O Lord, with a heart of thanksgiving, with my mouth filled with praise. Hallelujah. We want to praise him and lift him up. He is a good God, righteous in every way. So we want to go on and continue to praise and glorify the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to ask Brother David. Brother David, to read the scripture for us before we go into the word of God. Praise the Lord. Thank God for you, my brother. And thank God for everyone who are joining us tonight on our teleconference. Brother David, can you read the scripture? It will be taken from Ezekiel chapter 37. God bless you. It's an honor to be here with you today to share God's message, God's word. I'm reading this, um, Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 13. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord. He set me down in the midst of the valley and was full of bones. And he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And indeed, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Again he said to me, Prophesy to these bones. And say to these, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded 
and I prophesied there was a noise, a sudden and rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. Mm. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Also he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man. He said to the breath, I said the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say, our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come upon, come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, that I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up from your graves. Amen. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother David, for reading the scriptures for us. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We bless you. We thank you for your word and we thank you for, hallelujah, speaking to us tonight. Lord, we glorify you in all things that we do, in all our ways. We acknowledge you and we give you praise and glory for your name, for your word. Pray you will bless us, inspire us. Pray you will speak to us, Lord. I pray you will direct O oh God, let self be slain, hallelujah, and let your Holy Spirit, hallelujah, let your anoint, hallelujah, let your anointing be upon your people, hallelujah, another touch, hallelujah, hallelujah, another touch, my God, on top of, upon your people, we praise thee, we worship you, we glorify you, we give you thanks, in the name of Jesus, amen, amen, amen. praise the Lord, amen. Thank God for his word, telling us, you know, as we know, the, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Ezekiel. And as we read, it says, the hand of the Lord was upon me. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out of the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones hallelujah the hand of the Lord was upon me praise the Lord so we see that God wanted to use Ezekiel just as right now he wants to use his people he wants to he wants to put his hand upon his people and he wants to anoint his people because he has got a message for the world and a message for the church it says, it carried me out of the spirit of the Lord and set me up in the midst of a valley. So brethren, when we want God to use us, we have to be in the spirit. Hallelujah. We, the Bible says if we walk in the, in the spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So when we walk in the spirit, God can use us. Even as he wanted to use Ezekiel, he was carried out in the spirit. We, God can't use flesh, he has to use spirit because spirit work with spirit. So we have to be in the spirit. You know, and this Bible says, he, the word says, He carried me out of the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley. Now a valley is not always a good place. We don't want to be down in the valley. When we're down in the valley, God can't really use us. We need to be up in the spirit. We need to be anointed. We need to ask God to anoint us. We need to pray and seek the Lord and draw near to the Lord. And so he was set down, carried away into a valley which was full of bones. Now bones is not good by itself. When you see bones, you see there's no flesh, there's no life. A bones is representative of a lifeless body. 
all the joy, all the hope, all the aspiration, and everything else is gone. It's just dry bones. So, you know, you we could be going through a thing in life where we are so um, broken by, you know, it could be bereavement or it could be uh, we may be broken by um, tribulation, suffering or whatever, and we have, and the joy is gone. And it says, he was carried into the by the Spirit of the Lord and set down in the midst of valley which was full of bones. And he caused me to pass round about them, and behold, there were many in the open valley. Right now we think about the world and the world is full of dry bones. People may be moving around and doing their thing and they may be, you know, people are, you know, like in the days of Noah was married and given in marriage. People are living life just as normal, like nothing else, nothing going on and, you know, everything is just normal. But it's dry bones. Because without God, without the Spirit of God, without a connection with God, we are just dry bones. Amen. And so God said, the Lord said to Ezekiel, said, can these bones live? They are dried up. They are beaten by the sun and the rain. There's nothing left. There's no joy. There's no peace. There's no happiness. They are just dry bones. And he said, I said unto the Lord, Ezekiel said, I said unto the Lord, O Lord, thou knowest. We don't know what God can do, but we know that with God all things are possible. And I'm saying, brethren, that we are in a time now that we are not sure what tomorrow will bring. We are uncertain about tomorrow, what it will be. But God knows, and God has tomorrow in his hands. Songwriter says, I know, I know, I don't know about tomorrow, but I know who holds tomorrow. Amen. And we know that God holds tomorrow in his hands. God knows about tomorrow. God knows about the next day. Amen. So these bones are dried up. They are sorrowful. They are, there's no joy. There's no peace. There's no, it seems as if there's no hope. So, so Ezekiel said, O oh Lord, thou knowest, can these bones live? When you are down in the dumps, you wonder what is going to happen. And again he said unto me, prophesy, prophesy unto these bones. Prophesy unto these bones. And say unto them, Oh, he dry bones. Dry bones. Brethren, if we have any problem in the world, God is a problem solver. If we have any trouble, God is the deliverer. If we are sick, God is the healer. We can turn to God because he said in his word, I am the Lord that healeth thee. And the Bible says, by his stripes are ye healed. We are healed by the blood of Jesus. So he said, prophesy to the dry bones. Those that are suffering, those that are in need, whatever the condition, prophesy. Sometimes we have to speak the word of God. The word of God, there's power in the word of God. Oh, he dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now that's all the dry bones need to do. Nothing else. All ye dry bones, hear ye the words of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Because when we hear the word of the Lord and administer the word of the Lord and accept the word of the Lord, see the word of the Lord, observe, absorb the word of the Lord, we are absorbing the power of God. Amen. And it says, hear ye. That's all we need to do. The world that all that's all the world need to do hear he the word of the Lord hear the word of the Lord thus saith the Lord unto these dry bones 
you know, bones are very important. Because if you imagine that you, we are living and we don't have no bones, we, we will be like flubbling all over the place. Bones, bones is what causes us to stand up, causes us to move, causes us to do everything we do. We, we can't do without bones. But if the bones are dry, and if the bones are broken, they are not useful to us. So bones are very important. I imagine that when God created Adam in the Garden of Eden, I imagine that what God did was make the bones first. He made the bones first. And he says, prophesy to these bones. O ye bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord, I will cause breath. Bones without breath is, is useless. And he shall live. I will give you breath. So even though you may, we may be walking around, moving around, we need the breath from God. We need a special breath. Before Jesus ascended, into heaven after his resurrection the Bible tells me that he breathed he breathed upon his disciples and said receive ye the Holy Ghost the breath of God means a lot we may be breathing here but we're not the breath of God in, in energize us the breath of God give us strength the breath of God give us grace the grace, the breath of God administer mercy unto the weakest of sinners. Behold, I will breathe upon them. Breathe. I will cause breath to enter unto you, and he shall live. No matter what the situation that we find ourselves in, God is our hope. God is our salvation. The Lord Jesus is our strength. When we are weak, we are strong because of Jesus. I will breathe, I will cause breath to enter you. No matter what the situation, Jesus is able to breathe breath in us. Because the Bible says in Joshua, the Bible told us that the bones of Joseph, Joseph was one who went into, into Egypt. And before he died, it asked that his bones may be carried when the children of Israel were liberated from Egypt. And in Joshua 24, 32, it says, The bones of Joseph, which the children of Israel brought up out of Egypt, buried there in Shechem. Bones are important. And if the bones have no flesh, if the bones have no sinew, it has no life. So spiritually, we need to be drawn closer to the Lord. We need to have the anointing of God. Even sometimes when we worship and we feel the anointing, we want to walk with the anointing, we want to talk with the anointing. Hallelujah. When the, when the, when the Spirit of God come upon us, we feel refreshed. And it, if doubt, doubt and fear must go aside, because the Spirit of God give us comfort. The, the God is our strength. The, the psalmist says, the Lord is my strength and my salvation. He is our strength. And when he is with us, he breathes upon us. Even though we are feeling weak, his breath will refresh us. We thank the Lord. In Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, Isaiah, it says, Come now, let us reason together, say the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Oh, praise God. Though they be red as crimson, they shall be as wool. Hallelujah. If he be willing and obedient, 
he shall eat the good of the land. If there is a condition, if he be willing and obedient, he shall eat the fruit of the land. Come. God said, let's reason together. Your sin may be a scarlet, and I will make it white as wool. Though it may be red as crimson, they shall be white as snow. You see, the God we serve, that's why we can't stop praising God, you know. We can't stop praising Him. Because I, before I met, before I got saved, I was in sin. I was buried in sin, right up to the nose. And I found Jesus. Amen. And I said I would be obedient. And I repented. And I baptized in Jesus' name. And he blessed me with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He said if you be willing and obedient. All God asks us to do is to be obedient. And he's got, he's gone, he's got a, a prize for us. We are blessed. He will bless us in this life. And in the life to come. We will be as king and priests. Imagine that. Imagine what God has promised and prepared for those that love him. All we need to do is to serve him. If he be willing and obedient, he shall eat the good of the land. Not to worry about anything. If we are obedient and willing, we shall eat the good of the land. But he says there's an alternative. In Isaiah chapter 1 verse 20, if he refuse and rebel, no rebellion is not good. Rebellion is as the sinner's witchcraft. If we follow the word of God, all is well. If we rebel against the word of God, it says, but if he refuse and rebel, he shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of God has spoken it. And he shall be like dry bones. What separates us from God and what causes us to suffer, apart from suffering for the Christ and for the name of Jesus, is disobedient. We want to have our own way. We want to be our own boss. We need to acknowledge God is God. He made us. We did not make ourselves. Come let us reason together. So we were dry bones. And it says, I will breathe upon them. And I will, it says, I will bring sinews upon the flesh, upon them, and skin to cover them. And breath, and where there's no breath in them. But yet, there was no breath. So upon the dry bones, the Lord brought sinews and bought flesh, and bought skin, but there was no breath in them. And he said unto, and the Lord said, Come, ye four winds, prophesy unto the four winds, O son of man, and say, Thus said the Lord, Come, four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, and they shall live. You see, the word of God is so powerful. That whatever circumstances we find ourselves in, whatever the need in life, He promised to supply our need. No matter what it is, He promised to supply. He's a supplier of our need. And He's a provider of everything that we need. What a God we serve. He has not leave us nor forsake us. He will not leave us, neither will He forsake us. And in um, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 5, Paul writing to the Corinthians church says, For we preach not of ourselves. We do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. And ourselves your servant 
for Jesus sake for it says for God has who commanded the light to shine in darkness has shined in our, shined in our hearts and give us light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of the Lord Jesus God command light to shine in darkness we are living in a dark world we are living in a world of despair we are, so many things are happening around us we can't even keep track of what is going on around us the evil, the iniquity, the unrighteousness, the sin we can't keep track but we are surrounded by evil and the prince of the ear and the devil himself who roareth about the Bible says as a roaring lion walketh about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour so we have to hide in Jesus we have to hide on the rock hallelujah so it says the treasure but we have here you and I have treasure in this earthen vessel in the body in the flesh we have treasure is that wonderful we have treasure in earthen vessel that the excellent of the power may be of God not of us hallelujah oh glory hallelujah imagine you we have inside of you a great treasure in this earthen vessel in the flesh because when we have the Spirit of God in us we have power we can walk boldly and fearlessly because we have God with us isn't that wonderful it is good that we can live a fearless life because of Jesus that's what he's promised us we have in this in this body in this earthen vessel power the excellence of the power that may be of God and we see the disciples or they exercise the power of God oh praise the name of the Lord I just feel an anointing the power of God was expressly shown by the disciple when we see Peter went down to Samaria hallelujah and then the people received the, the gospel they received the word of God and Samaria was like a dead town hallelujah a dead city but when they got the gospel of God hallelujah then the anointing came when Philip went down to Samaria my God and the power of God came down in the city of Samaria hallelujah and we see how God they sent for Peter to come down hallelujah and we see the power of God oh glory be to God what a wonderful God we serve he's the same yesterday today and forever we have in this body earthen vessel the excellent of the power of God not of us and we Bible says we are troubled on every side but not distressed we are perplexed but not in despair we are persecuted hashako uh, not forsaken we are cast down but not destroyed always bearing in the body of dying of the Lord Jesus Christ that the life of the Lord of Jesus might be made manifest in us we are troubled but not in not distressed we are perplexed but not in despair persecuted not forsaken cast down shako, but not destroyed always bearing in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life also of Jesus might be manifest hallelujah in our bodies brethren let us glorify God brethren let us lift him up let us praise him he's the captain of our salvation hallelujah he's our power and our might he's our grace and our mercy he's our righteousness we have no righteousness of our own we have to bury ourselves in his righteousness 
Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. What God has done for us, brethren. What has God done for us? We were dry bones. What can dry bones do? We were in the valley. How do we get up out of the valley with dry bones? How will these bones live? Oh, praise the name of the Lord says, Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Prophesy unto these dry bones. If there's trouble, if you're troubled, it's like dry bones. If you're broken, if you're sick, you're dry bones. But God, the Bible said by the prophet of Ezekiel, dry bones. I will breathe. I will breathe unto you. And life will come into you. All your despair will vanish. All your fears will vanish. All your doubts will vanish. Whatever it is that is troubled, it will vanish. If you're distressed, your distress will vanish. Hallelujah. If you're perplexed, your perplex will vanish. If you're persecuted, I will not forsake you. If you're cast down, amen, you will not be destroyed. We think about Daniel when he was told not to pray or not to make any petition to another, any other God. Daniel says, I know my God. I will make petition to my Shako. I will make petition to my God. I will make petition. The king says the king has signed the decree that anyone who make any petition to any God, they shall be cast into the midst, into the lion's den. And I bet those lions was hungry. Amen. Amen. Brethren, we are not forsaken. God has never forsaken his own. Thank you, Lord. And when he was cast into the lion's den, the Bible said the lions were just looking. They could not come near him. Oh, praise God. It's the same God we serve, brethren. He delivered Daniel from the lion's jaw. He delivers Shadow Kamishak and Abednego from the burning fiery furnace. Hallelujah. He delivered the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. We sometimes we don't we, we need to think about where we are coming from. What we used to be and where we would be if it had not been for the Lord. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side? Where would we be? What would we be? Amen. Jesus says in um, John chapter 10 verse 7, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that came before me was thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. You know something, as children of God, we must know the voice of God. We must know the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord, about the songwriter says, sweeter than all. Hallelujah. Sweeter than all the world to me. Hallelujah. The voice of the Lord is sweet. Sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. The name of the Lord is powerful. So all that came before me was thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. When we hear the voice of the Lord, we know the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord speaketh peace. The voice of the Lord speaketh righteousness. The voice of the Lord speaketh mercy. The voice of the Lord speaketh life. The voice of the Lord speaketh hope. The voice of the Lord speaketh deliverance. The voice of the Lord speaketh joy. Hallelujah. 
We are to know the voice of the Lord. All that came before me, Jesus says, were thieves and robbers. Hallelujah. And it says, the thief cometh but to kill, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they may have life and more abundantly. Well, we have to love the Lord. We have to serve the Lord. He's good. God is so good. It's, his goodness is unspeakable. We cannot describe how good God is. We cannot describe how loving God is. We cannot describe how merciful God is. Some writer says His mercy is renewed every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. We have to love Him. We have to serve Him. We have to give Him the praise and the glory. That's due unto His name. The thief cometh. We know who the thief is. The old Lucifer, the old serpent. The same one that beguiled Eve in the Garden of Eden. We know who the thief is. Come to steal, to kill, and destroy. So we have to shun him. Because it don't mean us any good. Amen. The thief come to kill, to steal, kill, and destroy. I am come. I am come to breathe life in you. I am come, hallelujah, to give you, to put flesh on the dry bones. Ezekiel says the bones was all scattered. Amen. The bones were not in one place. There was broken bones. That's bad enough. Because all the broken, maybe the hand is one, the arm is one place, the feet is another place, uh, and the head, the skull bone is another place. But God says prophesy to these bones. And the bones will come together. And he said, then he said, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. And they say, our bones are dried. And we have lost, and hope is lost. And we are cut off in our parts. Sometimes as children of God, we feel that hope is lost. And sometimes we feel cut off. And sometimes we feel our bones are dried up. There's no substance. There's no movement. We don't know where to turn. Amen. But, G but the Bible says, prophesy. Prophesy, thus said the Lord. Behold, O my people. God has not forsaken his people. And we who trust in him, God has not forsaken us. Though we may be in despair. He said that further on in Ezekiel, I will open your graves. The dead that is buried and died in the Lord, I will open the graves. I will open them. You think they're gone. But God said, I will open your graves and cause you to come out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. The land of promise. We have a promise. We have a promise. This is not our home. He's going to prepare a place for his children. Those that love him. That are those that are looking for his appearing. The Bible says the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With the sound of the trump and the archangel, the church will be taken out of this world. God has made a plan. God has got a plan. God is a man with a plan. And he's coming to take the church out of the world. Hallelujah. And the dry bones, he will cause flesh to come upon the dry bones. Those that are saddened, those are broken, those are put aside, those are considered insignificant God will make us the Bible says the first shall be the last and the last shall be the first the dry bones 
shall live. God shall give life unto his people. Amen. God shall give hope unto his people. The, you know, there are many things, many people in the world and in the church who have dry bones. Some are spiritually dead who need to hear the word of the Lord and for the Lord to awaken and to breathe life into them. Very first important thing that God told Ezekiel is to prophesy unto the people and say, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Amen. That is where the key is. When you hear the word of the Lord, your bones, flesh will be upon your bones. Your sorrow will be turned into joy. Your sadness will be turned into hope. Your despair will be turned into joy. Not only do we need to awake our spirit, but also we need spiritual enlightenment. Because reality is spirituality. The patriots, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they did not find here any abiding city. The Bible says they seek a city eternal in heaven, made without hands. There was, no matter what, how we look at things, brethren, we have to face the reality. This is not our home. We have no here, we, not, we have not here an abiding city. We do not have here an abiding city. The recording has started. We have a home eternal in heaven. A city made without hands. Because if it's made with hands, it is not eternal. If it's made with hands, it's no good to us. It will vanish away. But the, the, the city and the place we are going is a place, a city made without hands. The, ho the place, he said, I'm going to prepare a place. That's where I am, he may be also. My, in my father's house, there are many mansions. Those mansions are made without hands. He didn't say, I'm going to make a mansion. He said, I'm going to prepare it. But it's made. He said, there's a many mansions in there. It's there already. Amen. Amen. There is much more realism in spiritual. Spirituality is life than actuality in the flesh. Nothing in the flesh will fall, the flesh will fail. The arms of man, the arms of man, the arms of the flesh will fail us. It will fail us. We didn't, we can't even trust our the, the, the writer says we can't even trust our own. And what we see with our eyes, they will fail us. When you spread, when you spend time in His presence, this is it now. When we spend time in the presence of the Lord in prayer, in supplication, when we spend time in the Lord, He will reveal the reality of sin that is in our life. Sometimes it can be very painful to deal with some of this issue that the Lord brings to light. But if we allow him to work on us, he will build us into a new creation and bring us into a new level of intimacy with him. Amen. God wants to be intimate with us. God wants to be with us. God wants to be closer with us. God wants to draw nearer to us. Hallelujah. God wants us to draw nearer to him. The two men who was walking on the road of Eminus Road. Hallelujah. 
where after Jesus died and was crucified, they were talking about Jesus. And the Bible told me that Jesus, Hashaku, Jesus draw near to them. Hallelujah. And he said, what manner of conversation he have and are sad. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. What manner of conversation had you and are sad? And they said, are you a stranger? They said to him, are you strangers in this past? You don't know about what happened to the Lord, how they crucify an innocent man. Hallelujah. And the Bible says he opened the scripture to them. Hallelujah. And then he went away. And they said, didn't our hearts burn with us? How oh, glory be to God. I feel an anointing right now. Didn't our heart, hallelujah, didn't our heart burn in us when he spoke to us? When we think, when we meditate on the Lord, when we talk about the Lord, the Lord draw near to us. And then we have, if, the, if our bones are dried up, the Lord will breathe upon our bones he will bring flesh on our dry bones of sorrow of despair hallelujah and whatever it is he will bring joy he will bring joy to our soul hallelujah praise the name of the Lord Jesus what manner of conversation he said to the two men that he have and are sad Brethren, God don't want us to be sad. God wants us to spend time in His presence. God wants us to draw near to Him. God wants to share His joy. One of the fruit of the Spirit is joy. God wants to give us joy in our soul. Despite pandemic, despite COVID-19, despite uh, uh, vaccination and all these things, God wants to give us joy. He wants to give us peace. He wants to give us hope. The, re the reality is that we are a prideful people and we always seem to resort back to pleasing ourselves and what makes us happy. He wants to show us the reality of trusting in Him only and allowing Him to awaken our dead spirit. God wants to show Himself to us. God wants to reveal Himself to us. God wants to use us as he used Ezekiel and said prophesy somebody has to speak to us so God has to use someone so when we draw near to God and God we get, we get this intimacy we get this closeness to God God uses us God anoint us God calls us to prophesy to dry bones somebody may be in despair and God will cause us to prophesy to them and said God it will heal you. God will deliver you. God will lift you out of the valley of dry bones. God will bring your bones together. God will put flesh upon your bones. God will put sinew upon your, upon your flesh. Hallelujah. And we, if we allow our spirit to die by not spending time in His Word, if we not spend, the more we spend time in His Word, the closer God draws to us. The more we feel His presence. And when we feel His presence, He speaks to us. He anoints us. He gives us His Word. He uses us. Hallelujah. We are a dying generation. And this youth group will die if we don't allow if we don't allow the breath of life to revive us fill us restore us and bring us back to true reality of who God is God is good and God is great and God is powerful and God wants to use us God wants his power to be seen in us God wants his anointing to be upon us. God wants us to say, Thus saith the Lord. As he said to Ezekiel, Prophesy, Thus saith the Lord. God wants us to say, Thus saith the Lord. You are, you are sick, but thus saith the Lord. I am the Lord that healeth thee. You are feeling hopeless, but thus saith the Lord. I am your hope. 
You are sad. But thus said the Lord, I am your peace. Hallelujah. You are broken. But thus said the Lord, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Oh, praise the Lord. This is the whole house of Israel. And he said, and he shall know the Lord when I have opened your graves. Oh, my people. God talking to us. Oh, my people. I brought you up out of your graves. Hallelujah. And I've put my spirit in you. And ye shall live. And I shall place you in your own land. And he shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and perform it. Thus saith the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Brethren, let us continue to give God praise and give God glory. We are so blessed. We are, I think we are blessed beyond measure. We are blessed beyond word. Because if we know God, in God we have everything. In God, we have peace, we have joy, we have hope. Hallelujah. In God, we have, we have hope of eternal salvation. We have hope. We have a heavenly hope. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it revealed to the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Hallelujah. I, I, just, feel, I just feel good talking about heaven. Because I, 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 I'm going to get there. I mean to get there. And no power of hell. And we need to get there. Hallelujah. We need to get there. And not the power of hell can stop us. Not all the demons of hell can stop us. Because God has made the way for us. He said, I am the door for the sheep. We just need to walk in it. Nothing can stop us. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. And we have to have that assurance. That's why the Bible says, Paul says, Cast not away your confidence. For it has a great recompense of reward. Cast not, brethren, cast not your confidence away. But live and glorify God. Live and glorify God. Live and lift up God. Lift and praise the name of Jesus. For what he has done. For what he has done. Look what the Lord has done. I don't know where I would be without the Lord Jesus. In my life I was a very, before I got saved I was a very revengeful man. Very, very revengeful. If you step on my toe, be sure I'm going to come and step back on your toe. And I'm going to step on your toe. Hata. Amen. Amen. Anything you do to me, I would do it back to you. Yeah. When I didn't know Jesus. But when I know Jesus, I hear him said, Vengeance is mine. I will repay. Hallelujah. So the man stepped on my toe and I said, oh boy. I just have to accept that him step on my toe and I say, sorry, well, all right. Let's let it pass. Praise the Lord. Because I am a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things are passed away. I'm born again. Hallelujah. More than a conqueror. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I have been transferred. My mind has been transfigured. I think of heavenly things. I think of, I think of the street that are paved with gold. I think of the walls of Juniper, of Jasper. I, I think of the crystal sea. I think of being come like the angel in heaven. I can ascend and descend. Hallelujah. What a hope. That's why the Bible says in John said in the Revelation, let no man steal your crown. Let no man steal your crown. Because there's a crown of glory that awaited us. And when Paul saw and knew the vision, he said, I'm now ready to be offered. Hallelujah. The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the fight. I have kept the faith. 
henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord shall give me on that day and not only to me but unto all they those who love his appearing hallelujah a crown of righteousness brethren there's a crown of righteousness awaiting you and I it is there waiting for us let no man rob your crown. Hold steadfast. Draw near to God. Study the word. Give God praise. Give him glory. And he will draw nigh unto us. Even as he did with those two men on the road, the Eminus Road. When they said and they spoke to the let's talk to the Lord and God draw near to them. The Lord Jesus draw near to them. And they said, when, he, when Jesus left, they said, didn't our heart, hallelujah, didn't our heart burn, hallelujah. When we talk about the Lord, when we draw near to the Lord, our heart burn with joy. The writer says, I feel like fire shut up in my bones. I feel like fire shut up in my bones. God bless you. We give thanks and praise to the Lord for his word to our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. I, is a Pastor Foster there? Yes, I am, sir. Pastor Foster, God bless you, sir. Glad to have you on our teleconference. Um, could I ask you to close in prayer? I'm just gone a few minutes over my time. Could you close us in prayer there, um, Pastor? The foster. Okay. <clears throat> Shall we pray? Amen. My God, may the heavens and the earth, the creator of all things. Yeah. We thank you for the day and for the desire that you've placed in our hearts. Oh, Lord, we thank you for the worship. Lord, we thank you for everything that you've done today and for the presence of your Holy Spirit and us. Thank you, thank you, Lord, and we pray that each and every one that leads this prayer meeting today will be blessed, sanctified, and saved, renewed. I believe, oh Lord God, that every day that we wake up, let us feel a renewal of our spirit. Let us feel a renewal of our desires. Let us feel a renewal of the love we have for you, so that we will truly serve you with all our hearts and minds, and we will fulfill your purpose here and earth which is to win souls and win them for your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, for those who are attending. We pray that you'll heal those who are sick, give those the strength and the courage to face the next day. Mm -hmm. And, oh, Lord God of heaven, that you'll protect us from every evil, especially this violence that is roaming throughout the earth. Mm -hmm. And in the name of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, we pray, Father God, that you'll accept this prayer as it comes from hearts who really want to serve you. And in the yes. name of Jesus Christ, we say hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God bless you, my brethren. I just want to ask before you go, is there anyone who has a special prayer request? Is there anyone who have a special prayer request before we go? Amen. We will pray one for another. And the Lord, good Lord bless you and keep you until we meet again. Amen. 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 God bless you. Yes, we love you. We love you all. Bye. God bless you, brethren. God bless you. Amen. God bless. Bye. Amen.